Welcome to this bio session two. We are going to start with our first presentation, which is stress detection protocol in vehicular driving using virtual reality and presents Amaury Santiago Orta. Good morning, everyone. I am Amaury Santiago, and today I'm going to talk to you about the stress detection protocol in vehicular driving using virtual reality. And the collaborator of this work was Jose Torres, Maria Blanco, Blanca Tobar, Juan Valdeo Arguelles, and Laura Garay. So, today's agenda will be an introduction, methodology, results, and conclusion. First, as this is a natural response of the body to face the challenge or threats in day to day life. A uh, common stressful situation in Mexico City is to be stuck in traffic uh, in peak hours, and it can be affect the uh, life quality or relationship, uh, inter interpersonal interrelationship, and some scientists are interested in quantifying and identifying the stress and virtual reality or VR. I use it to generate some specific scenarios to generate a kind of stress. So, uh, we made a collaboration between uh, the Laboratory of Computer Intelligence of the SIC and the Instrumentation and Signal Processing Laboratory of Opita. Uh, thanks to this collaboration, we made a same uh, simulator uh, with this equipment. And complemented with an EEG device and with one uh, E4 empathy. We choose the software Citical Driving because it has some exercise and space like a city, and we can control the number of pedestrians, the traffic, or the weather. So, with the equipment and the software, we start to design a protocol. In basis on generate a gradual stress level, and we use a guide the Helsinki Treaty. So this is the design of the protocol. We have three record stages and one preparation stage. Between between each of one, we have two minutes of rest. So wow. at the beginning, at the beginning. Hello, hello. And you hear? And you hear? I think it's the same thing. There's a moment. There's a moment. Somebody, is Somebody is presenting right now. Right now. Oh, okay. Uh, in preparation, in preparation, uh, I think it's the someone has someone has. Yes. So. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, the preparation stage is uh, to inform the participant how the protocol will be, and we acquire the uh, register equipment on the devices, and after that, we ask all of them if they have any doubt or if on uh, need to use the restroom. So if they agree, we pass to the first stage. And in the first stage, they have to solve a exercise. And they have three attempts to solve each of one. And one of our staff members has, uh, has a help of the participant. And the end, when he solved all the exercise, we pass to the second stage. And it is a kind of exam conformed with the eighth exercise, but continuously. And now he doesn't have any kind of help. So at the end, he has uh, five tries to solve the exam. And we pass to the last stage. The last stage is a kind of a driving exam in a city, 
and is a referee, virtual referee, which is uh, looking for the review performance. And he calls until five failures. And then if, he, if the participant has more than that number, uh, the referee stops the exam and he has eight attempts to solve all the exam. So I did the ten of them and uh, that's all. So with the design of the, the protocol, we select who can uh, be a participant. This is the inclusion criteria. Uh, all of them have to be over 18 years old, uh, at least one year of driving experience, uh, and we prefer uh, people with experience with video games, and then we design the poster to create the diffusion. So there is there are two images. So how the protocol was. So a staff member and the participant. We recite them in the SIG and then we made all the protocol, which is a session. A session. So there is the uh, two staff members are in the session. One of them are looking for the participant, and the other one is uh, attending the uh, equipment in the correct position. So at the end, we have a data set, uh, and we made 20 sessions, but and uh, due to technical problems, we just get uh, 17 records. So if in that uh, 17 data, we have a match, a range of age uh, between 18 and 52 years old for the participants. And the participant just the 40% have a previous experience with VR and the other one, the 16, 60% had. Uh, this is an example for how we see how the that data at the end. Uh, we have hair rate, the electrodermical activity, temperature, and acceleration magnitudes uh, versus time. Vertical lines are the division between the stage, and the horizontal red line is the mean of the signal in all the time. And uh, we have a pink square, which is a plus minus a division standard. And the green is the typical range of the values of each of one of the signals. So after that, we get the parametric and non-parametric statistical. And this is an example, example for EDA mean. And we get the stage, number of stage, number of participants, and the value of the stats. So we saw the behavior between all the stats, and we propose a division between five groups. The first group is the group A, which has a gradual ascending uh, stress level, which uh, we decide to select the stress level in defined by the EDA. And the other one is the group B. The group B starts in the highest stress level and tends to decrease. So the group C and group D has the highest stress level in stage one, but group C they didn't fin finish the sessions because all of them felt sick or dizzy. And group E is which has the highest stress level in stage two. So, in conclusion, we found there is a range in a stress level, if you can see the first graph, where if the prior response of a stress was below the range, it, in the next stimulus, it can be increased. But if the prior uh, stress level is above the range, it just can decrease. We can uh, increase the next response. So if the prior response was between the range, it tends to get between the limits. So about the VR use, we are not sure if all the stress response is about the protocol design 
because we found that some of many of the participants feel sick when the in, when we have a uh, latency in the image. So uh, at the end, with the protocol, we can have a, an orbit which can get uh, about uh, don't lose information, and we think it's successful. So thank you for your attention, and this is my email contact. And if you want to know more about the projects what we made, you can scan the QR code. So thank you. Hey, thank you, Mauri, for your presentation. Is there any question in the room? Is there any question online, please? Okay, I'm going to have a question. What was the most challenging part of the protocol? Most challenging. Uh, I think what the session record, because uh, the participant can be uh, agent the the session, but uh, we can we can be there uh, if you can a member. And we can be there in the seek, but if he don't respond, we think that he don't didn't came. But in some cases, yes, and in other ones, no. But uh, if he don't came, we don't know what to do. And if he came but late, uh, we tend to have to make faster. And normally, and we have the first session and the second continuously. So if he came late, we have problems in the next session. So I think that. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Amali. What is the next step in your research about this uh, issue? Uh, we, we propose to work uh, with VR. We think that VR can generate more uh, realistic scenario, but uh, it's, it's, it's not enough. And we propose to don't use it. And we propose to don't get too long the, uh, the, the protocol because all of them has a time amount of two hours. So it's a style for the staff members and even for the participant. Uh, that's all. And what do you think is your uh, main contribution in this first protocol? The, the main contribution is the data set. We get that cleanest data. And then, uh, this hypothesis, hypothesis about the range of stress limits and we we want to verify this information to know if there is a kind of limits in the human response okay. thank you very much Mavi, for your answers thank you okay. um, we're going to continue with our second presentation Let's see if um, she's ready. Sonal, are you ready? Uh, yes, just a second. I'll share my presentation. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, our next presentation is a protocol design and testing to investigate motor imaginary training using cues in different mediums, a pilot study. So we have uh, also another protocol and uh, presents Sonal Santosh Bagarwal from Poblin City University. Go ahead, Sonal. Mm -hmm. 
I'm sorry, I'm not having the access to share. Uh, I'm not able to share my screen. OK, um, I think you have no restrictions to share. Uh, you can share. Uh, well, mm -hmm. th there is no restriction. OK, um, I'll try this again. Yeah, yeah, please try again. And another option is that she sends us the, the file and we can share it with you. OK, I can. Uh, do you mind sharing your email address and I can share the file? Um, or I can just share the want... link about. Yes, of course. Um, Should I sh share it in the chat? I have the link. Yes, uh, we are going to share um, an email okay. with you. Can you see the chat, Sona? Uh, yes. Okay. I have your email. We just post an email. Yes. Okay, I've shared. Is it a PDF or not? Uh, no, it's a. I just uh, it's a Google Doc presentation, and I have shared the access to you. Do you receive that? Wait, wait. We are trying to uh, to see it. We. I haven't received your email yet, Sonal. Uh, I did share. Should I share again? Oh, it's ready, it's ready. Yes, we can see it. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Perfect, I see. Yes, yes, we can see it. Yeah, perfect. I think we are ready. I'm sorry for the technical problem. Okay. Uh, my question is, how do we uh, change the slides? Uh, you can tell us uh, next, please, and we can okay, change perfect. it for you. Okay, yes, perfect, no perfect. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Sonal Santosh Babirwal, and I'm doing my PhD at Dublin City University, Ireland, under the supervision of Dr. Shirley Cole. 
and I would be presenting my protocol to test and investigate motor imagery training using different medium. So the overview of the presentation is that we start with the introduction and the basics, and then we have the methodology, and then we discuss the results, and then uh, we have the discussion about uh, the entire study and the future work. Next slide, please. Uh, so talking about brain computer interface systems, it's a di direct communication between like brain's electrical activity and any external device. Let it be a computer or a robotic limb or a wheelchair. And there are different type of signals that are considered while designing a BCI system. And few of them are like motor imagery, P300 and event related potentials. Uh, my research is more focused on motor imagery based BCI systems, which is uh, like an intuitive interface that is uh, that provides control for applications directly from your brain activity without the requirement of any external stimuli. Next slide, please. Um, so uh, here a figure represents uh, about like the motor cortex and the somatosensory cortex, which are responsible for the motor imagery activities in a human brain. So for instance, when we imagine the movements of hands or feet without actually uh, performing the movement. It is uh, known as motor imagery signals, and mostly it is found into the motor cortex, and uh, the channels associated with it are C3, CZ, and C4. And the fun fact is that the left side of our brain controls the right side of the body, and the right uh, side of the brain controls the left side of the body, and that's how we associate the channels and take into consideration while the analysis. Next slide. Next slide, please. So this is a diagrammatic representation of a motor imagery based BCI system where the signals, raw signals are collected and then they are cleaned and then the features are extracted and further classified into, let's say, the difference between left and right hand movement imagination or both hands and feet imagination. And that is used as a, as a command to operate something like an exoskeleton. Next slide, please. Uh, a well-known training. So these sort of systems, they uh, ha they need uh, training. So a well-known training paradigm is grass BCI paradigm, which is shown in this figure where like a cross appears and then uh, there is this cue, which is like either a left or an right arrow shows. And that's when you start the imagination of left hand or right hand movement. Here we'll take an example of left and right hand movement, and then there is a pause, and so the entire uh, trial lasts for nine seconds. Uh, next slide, please. So when it comes to motor imagery signals, the pros of this is that we do not require external vis uh, visual stimuli, and we use mental strategies to control uh, the interfaces. But the cons is that it requires extensive training, and then there is an in uh, effective communication due to low discrimination capacity. So this is where training comes in handy, where a good training can actually make a difference. Next slide, please. So the evidence in the literature supports that medium and the cue of presentation for training are equally important. So initially we have seen like the training which is happening on the screen and then there is literature that also supports audio based cues where like uh, you hear instructions and audios or functional electrical stimulations where you get stimulation as cues on like uh, on like when you attach sensors to your body or there are cues which are based on virtual reality when you wear VR headsets. Next slide please. So you have the question like, uh, do mediums have an influence on training and what are the possible modes if we involve BCI systems in day-to-day -day life and that would require training? Uh, next slide, please. That's where we come up with this protocol where we design a methodology where uh, goes through a training, uh, like the grass BCI training, but using different setups. For instance, the cues are presented into VR system. The cues are presented over a screen, and then the, uh, the the cues are presented over audio with the help of speakers. And every subject goes through all these three trainings in a particular sequence using William Latin Square Design to avoid the uh, nuance factor and the learning factor, and to understand 
how uh, participants perform better in one particular medium. Uh, so in this methodology, uh, like at the first second, there is like the instruction happening, uh, like where like you see the cross or both hands. And then at the fourth second, you get an instruction where you have to imagine either left or right hand movement for two seconds. And then um, the protocol, then the person has to relax in the protocol. Next slide, please. Uh, so using William Latin square design, what is happening is uh, a subject one first goes through the uh, first goes through the training using screen audio and v then VR. Second subject goes through audio VR screen and then the third subject goes to through uh, VR screen and audio. In this way, we sort of eliminate the learning effect from every subject to see. Uh, what is the best medium to perform this kind of uh, training? Next uh, slide, please. So here we uh, to uh, analyze this, we use uh, band power features, which is uh, since motor imagery uh, gets operated between 8 to 12 hertz, which is uh, mu rhythms and beta rhythms, which is between 16 to 24 hertz, and using the channels C3 and C4 respectively. And uh, we use event-related synchronization and desynchronize uh, desynchronization, which is increase and def decrease of power in specific regions with respect to baseline, which is when no activity was performed. Next slide, please. So the results show that uh, comparing the mean uh, ERDS values of different mediums, uh, the participants perform better using VR medium as compared to other medium when it comes to just analyzing the signals. Next slide, please. OK, so how will this affect the classification when we have to uh, operate something like uh, when we feed this through machine learning, if we have to operate something? Uh, so we use the machine learning pipeline where uh, the raw EEG signal is first cleaned and then the ERD and ERS values are further passed through machine learning classifiers. Next slide, please. So the five uh, algorithms have been tested, which are which is random forest, KNN, linear discriminant anal analysis, support vector machine, and logistic regression. So uh, taking the features, uh, the study suggests that the KNN algorithm performs best with an accuracy of 68.8% for VR medium, which means when the participants were wearing the VR headset, uh, their accuracy to discriminate between the left and right hand signals of imagination was perfect during this. Um, next slide, please. Um, this is the result of ANOVA test within the algorithmic groups. So uh, the results from screen VR and uh, audio was given to all the classifiers to see the variability within the group. And then uh, it suggested that it rejected the null hypothesis that it's the uh, there is a variance in rest of the algorithms but it showed like a significant dis difference in knn uh, next slide please so to conclude uh, the study uh, it suggests that the participants perform better when the cues were presented into vr heads, the vr medium and the knn performed best with an accuracy of 68% when the training was done using vr headsets uh, next slide please Next slide, please. Yeah, thank you, and I'm open to questions. Thank you very much, Sunan, for your presentation. Thank you. Uh, we will let go if there is any question in the room. Sorry? Uh, any questions? Uh, we are asking for any questions here in the room. OK, I have a question, Sonal. Mm -hmm. uh, while you were doing your ECG, sorry, EEG recordings, uh, what was the equipment that you use? Uh, we have used Ant Neuro equipment, and the impedance was uh, lower to 5 kilo ohms. Uh, 5 kilo ohms. Uh, do you have any slides to show the EEG uh, recordings? I mean, the, the positions of the electrodes, what kind of electrodes did you use? Um, I used the wet electrodes, uh, which were, and the electrodes were C3, C4, and CZ used in the analysis and the machine learning of the entire uh, study. 
did you have any problem with these electrodes um, during your recording session? I mean, disconnecting or not a good connection? Uh, any problems with the EEG? How did you sort it out? Uh, mostly the problem is with the impedance because uh, sometimes with some people it never goes below uh, less than 10 kilohertz. So it's purely about uh, properly setting up the electrodes and tightening the cap and then putting the gel. And uh, another issue was when we had VR headsets with the EEG because that sort of also disturbs the signals. So taking extra care that uh, the VR straps did not uh, disturb the electrodes and th th for this reason we had used uh, only the temporal loop which which makes it much easier to just wear it around and not disturb this part excellent so what is next in your research uh the next part in my research is to add feedback which is like real uh, life interfaces and scenarios so to move an exoskeleton or a robot using uh, motor imagery signals. Do you think that it is necessary to test with more subjects? Yes, indeed. Uh, so this was just a pilot study uh, to just design the protocol and the future work involves uh, in-depth analysis based on the protocol and collecting data from more people. And what would you change in your protocol if you make some more recordings? I would probably add more questionnaires and make it both quantitative and qualitative. Excellent. Thank you very much for your uh, answer, Sonal. Is there any question online from people that is uh, online, please? Thank you very much, Sonal, for your participation. Okay. Thank you for this opportunity. OK, let's continue with uh, our third presentation and last from this session and is automated stress level detection for hospital nurses, a single triaxial wearable accelerometer central system approach. And presents Muhammad Saqib from the University of Liberal Arts, Bangladesh. Muhammad, can you hear us? Hi. Hi, Hi I'm hearing you. Welcome to Hi. this session. Are you ready to present? Yep. I'm ready. Excellent. Can, can you hear you me share? properly? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Perfect. Yes. Okay. Yes, we can see your presentation now. So thank you for organizing this uh, conference. And uh, uh, this is Mohammed Saki, and my co-author is Soeda Shahnas Parvis. Our paper title is Automated Stress Level Detection for Hospital Nurses, a Single Triaxial Wearable SMR Sensor System Approach. So we are from University of Liberal Arts, Bangladesh. Uh, this is the table of contents we will uh, discuss in this presentation. So introduction. Uh, in today's world, the, uh, there are many uh, people dealing with stress, and this is especially true for uh, nurses who have to handle a lot of work uh, and wait, wait, stress wait, from their Muhammad. jobs. Mohammad, uh, yeah. you are not changing the slides. Okay. Excellent. Yes, uh, can you share it as a presentation mode, please? Um, my camera is off. I can see right now. Okay, can you, can uh, you see me? Uh, excellent. We can see you now, but your presentation is not in a presentation mode. Can you click on the hey, excellent that one? Yes. Okay. okay, okay. So, introduction. Um, in, 
Go ahead. In today's world, there, there are many uh, people dealing with stress, and this is especially uh, true for nurses who have handled uh, a lot of work and stress from their jobs. If we can see from the infographics in, in the right side, uh, we can see the nurses dealing with uh, uh, many patients, uh, and they are uh, uh, they are uh, uh, they are dealing with a lot of stress. If we can see the question is, uh, there are many questions there and they can be stressed. So we have come up with the idea that we, this stress can automatically uh, detect the level. Uh, so we put uh, accelerometer sensor system uh, and the machine learning techniques here. And this is the methodology. Uh, uh, in this section, we'll provide an overview of the related uh, uh, related uh, experimental process. Uh, if we can see the uh, uh, device development here, raw data, uh, signal acquisition, and ML model. This is the systematic uh, process of our uh, research. And if you can see the right side, there is quantitative assessment of stress. Uh, this survey question was assessed during the data collection procedure. The scale one to two is lowest stress. We, uh, we have a scale, the uh, participants stress level and scale three to five is medium stress, scale six to seven is high stress. Mohamed, so, uh, change your slide, please. We are seeing the first slide. You have to share uh, the whole screen because uh, otherwise we can see only one of your slides. Uh, if you want to uh, stop, stop sharing, and when you share again, please select. Yeah, yes, yes. You can share, you can share. Ah, I also okay, provide okay. my presentation slide for, to you. Thank you. Okay, now we can see methodology, right. Uh, if you, uh, okay. Stop. <laughs> Uh, you stop sharing. Okay, now when you share, yes. select um, the whole screen. Uh, okay. Okay. Okay, try to uh, change the slide. No, with, uh, oh yes. Now we see introduction. Yes, and now we can see the whole screen. Excellent. I can, um, may I start from the methodology section? Or introduction section? Sorry, Mohamed. Uh, should I start from the introduction section? From introduction, please. Yeah, yep. Uh, yes. In today's world, there are many people dealing with stress, uh, and this is uh, especially true for nurses who have handled uh, a lot of work and stress from the from the job. If if we can see from the infographics, uh, the nurses dealing with uh, various uh, patients, and they are. Uh, stress in the various reasons. If we can see the uh, question is how they can uh, can be stressed. So we come up with the idea that uh, we will, uh, this stress level will automatically detect hospital nurses le stress level. So we, we have uh, used a uh, single triaxial or evolutionary sensor and machine learning techniques in this research. So this is the methodology section. Uh, uh, this post, this in this research, the, there is there we use the systematic procedure uh, for such as uh, device development, raw data, signal acquisition, ML model. And if we can see the right side of the slide, that there is quality tip assessment of stress. So the survey question was uh, collected from uh, the data collection. Uh, during data collection. So we have a scale, the question here, scale one to two was low stress, scale three to five was medium stress, and stress six to seven is high stress. So how we could that uh, collect data from the uh, participants? Uh, so first of all, uh, we have collected data from the participants, uh, uh, from uh, 12 participants, uh, where male and female both here, in, if you can see the right side, there is a systematic uh, system block diagram. Uh, where is Arduino? Uno, we have used uh, ADX 345 sensor uh, and uh, related components. And we can see the left side, uh, the nurses giving their uh, psychological stress, uh, psychological data to, uh, to us, and they provided uh, uh, 
and this is the sig uh, signal uh, sensor signal processing. Uh, the right side uh, is the low stress data and medium stress data and high stress data. So this is the raw data especially. Uh, we have to uh, we have to filter uh, pre-process those data. Uh, so. Okay. Uh, we have used uh, here high pass filter and the 0 0.1 was uh, 0 0.1 is cut off frequency and we have used a uh, normalization technique here uh, there are six normalization normalization technique we have used uh, in this uh, research uh, also we have used uh, uh, five second epoch um, which is we, ha we, ha we have segmented this uh, uh, signal into five seconds after that, uh, the feature extraction procedure is uh, occurred. Uh, we we have uh, used uh, some. Uh, we have already liter uh, literature review. Uh, there are many researchers have used uh, those uh, those feature extraction procedure. We have followed them and we have uh, extracted 13 features in, in this research. Research. So how we could level the data? If we can see that there is uh, every column here. Uh, there those are the features are uh, and. Uh, we have to know the accelerometer has, has three axes. So each axis has uh, one feature. Uh, so there are third, three axes. So 13 features into three. There is 20, uh, 39 column here. And in the right side, uh, we have labeled uh, the, this is one because of this is the uh, lowest stress data. We, we have used uh, lowest stress as one is for labeling. And this is uh, medium stress data. We have labeled this data as uh, two. And uh, if you can see the right side, there is the labeling uh, is two. And this is the medium stress data. And uh, this is uh, the right labeling of three. This is the high stress data. And uh, how uh, this is the uh, if we can uh, describe the cla classification algorithm here in this uh, uh, presentation, uh, we can. I expect the more machine uh, learns uh, through the data provided to it, the more uh, accurately it can detect object or task. For uh, for training a machine or uh, or to uh, or to ensure the data detection correct, correctly, some algorithm needed to be followed. There are two major uh, algorithm we have um, literature review from the other researcher, the supervised learning algorithm and unsupervised learning algorithm. In supervised learning, uh, the data provided to machine has to uh, has known as level. For example, spam message and non-spam message. Through the data, through the label data, the machine can be uh, predict uh, the future data uh, or its own. Uh, some of the supervised uh, supervised learning are given below. This, uh, this is this is the this is decision tree, distribution analysis, neighbor classification, logistic regression, support vector machine algorithm, and KNN and else And what is unsupervised learning algorithm uh, in unsupervised learning and uh, the input data is not leveled therefore we, we, we more the model needs to be uh, prepared using mathematical process uh, in the input data some uh, unsupervised learning uh, algorithm are given below k means principal component analysis and hierarchical clustering and Gaussian mixture model so in this research we have used supervised learning algorithm uh, and uh, we also use cross validation approach. Uh, cross validation is a technique that measure how the result the model will uh, generate to the independent data set. Uh, this cross validation is used to categorize the data into training data set and test data set. Uh, then test set is uh, predicted using the training data set. It is important to validate the training uh, training set to gain uh, high accuracy. Uh, so there are several uh, model uh, cross validation approach here. Uh, K fold. Uh, hold out and leave one subject as loss of approach. Uh, we have used leave one sub subject out loss of approach. Uh, as we have uh, as we have low data sample to train and test. Uh, so we have used this loss of approach. Uh, loss of, uh, loss of, uh, means one subject was excluded from testing while others all subject uh, were used for training. Such as we have you we have we, we have uh, 12 parties uh, 12 subjects uh, so loso will uh, do that uh, 11 subjects will for training and 12 or last one subject will be for testing for fast iteration it will iterate every every uh, subject and uh, uh, we have followed um, so this is the performance performance matrix or uh, accuracy sensitivity specificity decision equal f and f on a score we have used those performance ma performance matrix in our research and this is the svm uh, prediction for subject one if we can see the right side, one, two, three is the class of the uh, 
of this data set and uh, exactly is how correctly predict the model and across is how it is it incorrectly predict the model so you can see the the result is much appreciable uh, so this is the uh, result of our research uh, we can see medium gaussian svm has the highest uh, gain, gain the highest accuracy and coarse gaussian svm uh, has gained the lowest uh, accuracy and also f1 score is very so uh, this is the cross validation of confusion matrix if we compare uh, mgsvm to uh, cgsvm svm achieved the highest positive accuracy of every classes if you can say low medium and high if we compare this uh, cgsvm to S uh, msvm so uh, the uh, key findings of our research work um, uh, we have uh, we have uh, training accuracy from uh, mgsvm that is 98.7% uh, and testing accuracy is 80.4% and uh, there is a feasibility of stress detection and flows in high stress class prediction and, uh, we have uh, we have recognized that a high stress class is some uh, flaws if you can see the test accuracy result for all subjects this is the uh, this is the average of, of all subjects. If we can see the the, the every subject have has the accuracy here, and the, uh, if we can 10 to 11 and 12 is the high 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 stress class. So the the low compared to other classes. And con, uh, conclu uh, conclusion. And the findings of uh, this study demonstrate the utilizing data from NARCES as its sensor. It is possible to predict uh, whether the user is interested or not. And we have achieved uh, such, uh, um, such accuracy 80.4% and 82.2% uh, respectively. And the future work should be uh, we have uh, integrated a lot of uh, sensor uh, if we consider easy easy signal. PPG sensor and others, other sensor can be used and hand gloves to be used uh, in this research for future work. And uh, we can also use a brand new data set for and also use video and audio recordings uh, during uh, working hour in the run access. And also, uh, we can use this in real time uh, the, that nurses can be uh, automatically uh, understanding that they are. Uh, stressful situation. So thank you. If you have any question, please ask. Presentation. Is there any question in the room? Please, okay. Uh, can I have uh, a question. Uh, uh, is someone? I have a question, Muhammad. Um. Can you go back to your slide uh, 16, please? Okay. Can you uh, see the slide, uh, 16? 16, yes, that one. Uh, I can see yes. that in subject 12, there is a very, very low accuracy. Do you have any explanation about that? What um, happened with that subject? This is uh, for a high stress. Uh, high stress prediction. We always, uh, this is basically, uh, I think, uh, the subject are uh, not the uh, Properly answered our question, I think, and the scaling was not be correct in this subject. So that's the why that's why it is low accuracy. I think. Do you think that there was any problem with the sensor uh, in that specific well, uh, subject? Um, uh, I think. Uh, we we have uh, checked uh, cross checked our sensor. Uh, if you can see the pictures, uh, we also uh, we have uh, previously uh, experiment uh, before this. Uh, we have uh, selected eight participants before this experiment. So we have cross checked our sensor system. Uh, so this uh, I think sensor system is really okay in this research.
Okay, how are you thinking to use your results in terms of the hospital? Is the hospital open to be feedback from your results? Are you going to use your results for taking any um, safety? Um, I mean, um, we have already measures. <laughs> Uh, we have already uh, uh, put it our uh, feedback in the uh, in the uh, in our paper. We have all we discussed uh, uh, two uh, senior scholar uh, in our question uh, scaling how to scale our this uh, this uh, data. So we have uh, all, all we have uh, we have showed this uh, quality assessment of question to uh, one psychiatrist psych and two scholars, senior scholars. They have given their uh, they, they given their statement that this is OK, and so that we have incorporated those research. And how did the nurses um, accept your um, protocol? Were uh, they happy so, uh, the protocol? Uh, the, uh, how was the nurses um, opinion about your system? Were they happy to participate in your protocol? Um, was there any problem with the participation? Yes, we all, we all, we, uh, first of all, uh, firstly, we have faced some uh, problem uh, because we, we we have selected uh, uh, three to four uh, hospital in near Dhaka city. Uh, so we have uh, we have approached uh, some uh, hospital authorities that we, we will uh, we will research this uh, and the methodology we have showed their, them. So they are so the two hospital are really appreciate our uh, procedure. So they. Uh, they they give the permission to research and the nurses uh, are uh, we as we can see or as we already uh, uh, I already talked to you that we first we uh, we have selected eight participants and they uh, they give their data after that we have selected twelve participants in this research. Okay, thank you very much, Mohammed. Do we have any question online? OK, we have no questions, so thank you very much Mohamed, for your presentation and thank you very much for your presence here. Thanks Mohamed. see you. Is that what is there another session? There's another session here. Yeah. Another session. Mm -hmm. So that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh,